guys. We're here today to talk about something that plagues every artist. How much do you charge? That is a question that we have all had at one time or another. And then you have some like me who have struggled with that issue for 15 years and still have not found the right place yet. <laughs> so I hope you can take my advice um, and see if it helps to get you started on the right path and to trying to figure out how much you should charge because there are so many factors that have to go into play with it. Um, I will say there is no one right answer about how to charge for your art. That is something that you will have to eventually figure out on your own as an individual artist. Okay, so let's get started. Here are a few things that you need to keep in mind when you're fixing your price list. How experienced are you? Are you a new artist? Are you going to be selling online? Are you intermediate and are wanting to start selling online? Or are you very experienced and have been selling online for a while? but not quite sure that you're charging the right amount. Um, you need to consider also um, the cost of your materials and your supplies. Your overhead, if you have any, and what I mean by that is if you are an artist that has a studio that is not inside your house, um, and you're having to pay rent on a place, you need to take things in, like that into consideration in your price as well. Um, what kind of a fan base do you have? Do you have a lot of followers or is it just like you just have a few friends and a few family members who really love your art? <laughs> but now the fan base if you want to grow a fan base, and I'll talk about this in another video, you, you will get out of it what you put into it. So if you want to have a big fan base and possibly make a living as being an artist, you are going to have to get very involved in social media and the followers will come. Paint and they will come. <laughs> that was stupid, wasn't it? <laughs> Um, I'm just joking around. Uh, but no, I am serious. You are going to have to put work into it if you want to try to make a living. Being an artist, you, you are going to have to become very involved in the right places in order to get a fan base that is big enough to follow you where you can make a living on your art. Okay, um, another good starting point. Um, Look at other artists who use the same medium you do, um, the same, not necessarily style, but like, um, I kind of like to do uh, fairy art and fantasy art. Um, this is just an Alice in Wonderland piece that I've been working on. I really don't paint Alice in Wonderland all the time. Um, but. Uh, try to find some other artists who you kind of paint in the same things they do. Like if you're a landscape artist, then go look for other landscape artists who have about the same fan base as you do, about the same experience that you do. And sometimes, I will be honest, sometimes that is very hard to, to do. Um, and that's where you'll just kind of have to start from scratch with the pricing and work your way up. Um, uh, 
Also, um, I will say this right from the start. Once you get your prices figured out, do not drop your price just to sell something. I have done that. It's supposed to work the other way around. Your art is not like a car. It doesn't deteriorate the moment you drive it off the lot. Your art is supposed to go up in value. <laughs> That's what we want. So once you figure out a price, don't drop it even if you haven't sold anything for a couple of months and i'll talk more about stuff like that in another video because the reason for that is this say you finally figure out your price list and you sell three eight by tens for eighty dollars each well a couple of months down the road you've got five more eight by tens online for $80 a piece, but they're not selling. They're not selling. Do not drop the price at all because the people who bought a piece of your artwork at the eight by 10, $80 price, they're gonna get ticked off if you sell another 8x10 that is possibly better or more detailed for $50 and if it they're going to get mad <laughs> so don't do that um, because it's not fair to you and it is sure not fair to your customers okay so Keep that in mind. If you are a new artist, or even if you're an intermediate artist like me, a lot of times the intermediate artists like me, yeah, I've got a lot of experience. I've been drawn for years and years and years, but most of us feel very uncomfortable sometimes we feel like we're charging too much and to be honest with you it's it's actually the other way around we feel guilty or are afraid to charge what our our art is actually worth um that's my category and i'm having a hard time getting out of that category um but anyway um buyers mostly relate the most to the size of the artwork and the medium okay um, now like I said if you're a newer artist you really need to start low in price then work yourself up to a level okay um, now I'm just throwing this out here these are not my prices. I'm just giving you some examples after you factor in all of the other things that I have mentioned up to this point. Um, price your original artwork on size. That's the easiest method to me. Um, like square inch. Um, I'm just throwing these totals out here. Like I said, these are not my prices and I'm not expecting you to do this. I'm just, you need to factor in all those other things that I mentioned before you can come out with something. Um, and start small paintings too. The square inch, you take the size of the painting which is, well, I'll say eight by 10. Okay, you times the length and the width. So in other words, length times width 
8 times 10, that's 80 square inches. Okay, if you charged $1 per square inch and 8 by 10, you should ask $80. Okay, and if you want to start off that way, that's fine. A dollar per square inch. See, I even feel guilty. <laughs> I think it's just because sometimes we feel guilty because it's like, oh my gosh, but it just doesn't feel right, you know, making money on something that we find so enjoyable. <laughs> I think that's what our problem is. Um, um, and you might think that's too low. Um, but to me, it's a good starting point, just to be honest with you. Because if you're not a well-known artist, and you don't have a big fan base, and you put it on eBay, you may not can get $80 for that painting. Or it might be as good as a... Uh, Thomas Kincaid's the only person that's coming into my mind right now. Of course, his paintings are going to sell for more because he's well known. Um, but anyway, uh, now that's acrylic paint. Okay. Uh, but that's a good starting point. But just to be honest with you, um, $80 might sound like a lot to some of y'all out there, or it may not sound near enough, and that's closer to it. That's, in my opinion, a dollar per square inch, whether you're new or intermediate or advanced, that's way undercharging. But sometimes that fan base means a lot. Um, because that $80, that's not including, you've got to take into consideration your cost of materials, online fees if you're putting it online, um, but if you wanted to charge, you know, whatever you want to charge for it, just don't be like, if you're a newer artist, don't be like, well, I'm going to charge $20 per square inch because I'm afraid you'll get disappointed because it won't sell for that much. It might if you've got a big fan base, but it's probably the odds are stacked against you. Um, now, I prefer the linear inch. Um, that's where you add the length and the width. Um, So like an 8 by 10, that is 18 linear inches. And of course you're going to have to figure out how much you want to charge per linear inch. Okay, another method that you could use if you wanted to. I don't prefer this method, but it's 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 fine if you want to use this method. Um, uh, by the hour. Um, And eventually, if you do a lot, you're going to get faster. Now, you know that. Um, so, like, if it takes you 10 hours to do an 8 by 10 well, that 8 by 10 would be $100. Okay? Um, and if you are a much more experienced artist, $10 an hour is not enough. And if you've got a big fan base, it's not enough. Because I hate to just come out and say this. Even me being intermediate, I probably could do uh, an 8 by 10 in 10 hours, surely, and get $100 for that painting. But you know what? I could go up the road here to Papa John's 
and start off at $12 an hour doing dishes. <laughs> and that, that doesn't, there's nothing wrong with washing dishes either. But it's just, uh, when you compare it that way, um, I think I deserve at least 15 to 20 dollars an hour for my creative imagination when I can go up the road you know I make 12 dollars an hour washing dishes so I at least need to charge more than that and just do the dishwashing to fall back on if it don't work out with the art <laughs> I hope I gave y'all enough information to get started <laughs> If I didn't, I will probably remake this entire video. If I would stop spending so much time making videos and editing and redoing and refilming and re-editing, I could have a house full of paintings. Maybe sell some too. <laughs> but anyway, um, So remember, before you can get your price, how experienced are you? What kind of materials are you using? Are they high quality? Are they cheap? Um, how big of a fan base do you have? Have you looked at other artists yet to see, to kind of compare? and get you a good starting point. Um, once you do that, then sit down. If you do acrylics, you can either go by, you know, a good starting point is square inch. Um, I would start small, you know, like even four by six, or five by seven, you know, something small because they're easy to ship. I'm, you know, when I'm saying that's if you're like wanting to sell something on eBay or Etsy or, you know, whatever, you probably have better luck starting off on eBay. That's where a lot of us got that good start to get you on the path. Um, okay, I hope I've done an okay job. <laughs> about pricing your art, but remember there is no one right formula. You eventually are going to have to figure that out individually um, based on all the things that I've mentioned and you might have a couple of more scenarios that you personally yourself need to factor in. But I really would love it if you subscribe to my channel, but you don't have to if you don't want to but either way you are welcome at my channel anytime that you want to without subscribing i really appreciate it i appreciate all my fans and thank you for all the support and i will catch you in the next video so i'll see you real soon